I bought my, I was looking at my receipts. I bought my first Vito product back in uh, 2012. Went to a train supply and they had the LC Pro Pack bag. And I've still got them. 108 dollars bought two of them that day and you know i don't know what they go for today i can't remember what the lc goes for but i know 108 dollars is pretty cheap 2014 i got my got my backpack hey sunny sunny's kind of nosy anyway got my first tech pack this is actually the replacement uh I had the receipt, got it sent back in for the uh, no downtime warranty. They sent me a new one. Uh, they couldn't fix my old one, so I got this one on the five-year deal. But I paid $215 for this one. I know they're two, $289 right now. Seems like $289 or $299. So I got mine pretty good. I got mine at the... Uh, parts house so sometimes you get a good deal online but sometimes going to the parts house is the best deal but this video is to introduce my newest edition not this one hey watch out this one here the new tech pack mc the smaller form factor of their backpack so on a lazy saturday morning going to show you the comparison of these two bags. I try to get my assistant out of the picture. Come here. Yeah. There we go. So you can see the height the difference. You can see the width difference. From the top, you can see the thickness difference. And I'll see from the side. You can kind of see the it's just a little bit smaller in every way. And the one main difference besides the, the, the diminished size is it doesn't have a flap to carry anything. And that was the only thing that kind of bummed me out was because I was gonna put, I usually, this is my Daikin bag. So all my VRV stuff that I do, I take this up there with me for my troubleshooting and uh, working on. So I was gonna put my charging hose in the flap and I realized it didn't have one so so what I ended up doing is putting that's all my leads so I'm lying to you already back here I do like that it has this beefy metal uh, support for your straps like this one that was the best thing they kept on here. I really do like that. And they do have some rings here you can attach things to if you wanted to. Uh, so, in here, I have a charging hose. And I have a 516 adapter right in here because all the VRV stuff is 516. So unless you're using core tools at the time. Uh, yeah, I use the Appian core tools, so I have the 516's core tools, so, you know, they got a quarter inch flare on those, so you don't necessarily need it if you're evacuating and doing a repair. But let's see, you see kind of the form factor of the, the new bag. Let's see what I got in it. So this is the back side of it, where the straps are at. So I've got my leads, my, my temperature probe for my fluke amp clamp that's on the other side of the bag. On this side I have the Subco M500. We use that to just give a quick mag ohm on a compressor that we might think is uh, bad. We always check 
you always check the resistance. And then I also I've got a fluke 87.5. And the leads for that are in here. I've got the soft lead set, the silicone lead set. It's really nice. Yesterday, I got a smaller form factor inverter phase checker. Focus. There we go. Now this works like the big silver one that I've had. You know, the lights light up and kind of indicate a pass and fail. But it's, I, I wanted this one because it's a lot smaller and it fits in the bag. The other one I had to strap to the side of the bag like I've got my uh, little socket set and my, uh, my Affion uh, ion gauges. Got them in a, in a Testo bag. And this doesn't have an on-off button either, so that's kind of nice. You don't have to worry about killing the batteries by turning it on. It powers up on its own once you hook it to the UVW leads. And on Daikin, you have an inverter test mode, so you put it in inverter test mode and it will run it, run it through its deal. Uh, I have these, which I don't use too much. I, I was trying to get an, uh, kind of a do-all set of... Uh, uh, you know, cutters, crimpers, the whole thing. And it's just, honestly, it's, it's, it's okay, but it's not that great. I'm gonna end up getting another, getting my Klein uh, Stake-On pliers in there. And, and then I've also got, oh, I had my regular wire strippers, or uh, yeah, my regular Klein wire strippers. I don't see them here. I have these, these are just crimp pliers, and the reason I use them is sometimes for the flag terminals. These have more options to crimp, and I like them. They're the, I think the IE, IE 150s. Oh. I got some of the, I've had these for a while. I think these are the Viha, yeah, screwdrivers. You know, small thermostat screwdriver, linesman's, just in case. I went ahead and got some uh, different size extensions. These are nice to have. I got the three inch, six inch, and the 10 inch. Uh, temperature probe, magnetic, just in case. Oh, some more VHS screwdrivers, Phillips standard. Uh, this I don't use too much for this. this. This actually belongs in my rooftop bag. That's what my original tech pack is now. That's my rooftop bag. So, brush just to clean out some electrical when you open up the electrical, and you know, spiders have decided to make a home in there and leave you some cobwebs and things like that. Tape. Some additional bits, 5 16 is the most used on the VRV uh, equipment, the outdoor panels and such. Mirror, just, just when you need it. Some assorted bits here, Phillips bit. Um, indoor units have a lot of Phillips screws on there, so I have that on hand. That's kind of the reason I got the different size bits. Let's flip them around. 10 inch, 6 inch, Fluke 324. I use the Fluke mainly when it's really cold outside. Some other meters are not rated down below 32 degrees operating temperature. And uh, so I will use these mainly for that. And that's what the 87.5 uh, actually has a good range as far as meg ohms and uh, check in thermistors. I had this as my do-all, but it tops out at 60,000 ohms. So when you're checking a thermistor and it's supposed to be, you know, 150 ohm or 150,000 ohms, let's say, this one just says open line. Found that out the hard way. I thought I had a bad thermistor. It's like, there's no way it can be bad under the conditions. And I started looking at the documentation and found out that it topped out at 60,000. But I keep it mainly for this. You can put a wire in here and it will check the, the amp draw on the wire, anything up to 60 amps, instead of having to have it right here in the center. That's why I keep this meter. I really like it for that. And 
three phase rotation. You can actually put L1, L2, L3 on here and check the electrical feed coming in and you can check the rotation on everything that you've got. And it's handy for that. Got small, small uh, cutters getting in there on the VRV stuff. You got a lot of zip ties, you know, clip, clip, snip. Get in there nice and tight spots. Metric. Allen, uh, L, you know, hex wrenches. A lot of the things. Uh, number four, number eight, and number nine. Eight and four on BRB3. I know on BRB4, they have the number nine comes into play. Use these because they can get all the caps off and they're short. I just ordered some used wrenches on eBay, some more crescent. They're not crescent, adjustable wrenches. And the reason I got them off eBay, I got them used. I got them for a decent price and they're American made. And honestly, the quality is just better. Hey, nosy, get out of there. I've got some copper pliers, Knipex, um, you know, needle, small needle nose, magnet. That time when you drop the screws through great and you know you're gonna do it, they put the catwalks. On a lot of these units, you'll have them mounted up high for snow. And then I'll have a catwalk that's perforated. And you're eventually going to drop a screw in there. And I got another needle nose and another pair of small cutters. Kind of redundant, actually. These may eventually be moved out of the bag. I have wire made up. When I was working on water source, the location to get to the leads for checking the inverter board, I do believe, I ended up using these i've only done it once and i made them up on site I'm trying to remember why i did this yeah i went off of the on the water source there's just a weird setup and it was easier to put these on the terminals and disconnect from the compressor and then use these to actually check my operation. I believe in my inverter board. I, I'm not quite sure. But there's a reason I made this up and it was to check check something on the inverter compressor. It was either the board and it wouldn't have been the compressor itself, obviously, because you can just pull the terminals off of that. But I had I kept them because I thought if I ever get back to a water source, I'll need those. And then once I get to it, I'll figure out why I needed them. It's going to happen. You're going you're gonna to run behind somebody that, you know, these screws here, there's some of the originals in here. I usually throw the originals in here for whatever reason. I don't know. It's just it's a bad habit of collecting, um, saving, you know. It's like a pack rat. The screws that go into the the VRV equipment, their 516 head, their fine thread. Somebody's gonna hammer them in there and they're gonna strip them out. So I found in order to keep it, the sanity intact, I usually, I get the number 12, three quarter inch and they've got the 516 head and I always keep these on hand. And then if there's a bunch of stripped out screws just barely hanging in there, they don't thread. I will have these and put them in there and they hold really well and it's just, and, and then you don't have to keep changing bits. You get some guy that'll put a quarter inch head on there that's got a fat, you know, a number 12 with a quarter inch head, and it's like, it's, it just drives me insane. You know, five sixteenths, keep it all the same. It's out of movie. Everybody's friend, Nylog, good for, uh, for, for the caps. Caps will leak, um, service valves will leak. And you put a little bit of this on the cap and tighten the cap down nice and snug. You don't have to kill it. Just put it down there nice and snug, you know, and that'll keep them from leaking. It's also good on the flares, too. I like them on the flares on the indoor units. Uh, and I got all, my, got all my leads for this guy. He's in here. You know, the two leads, the normal L1, L2, and then the L3 uh, lead is in here. We want to check rotation on three phase. And then I bought these from Harbor Freight because with these guys, I can put this on there and use my quarter inch, use any socket that I want. And the whole thinking was, oh, 
was my little uh, little bag in here with you know my sockets, and they go up to half inch. This one's a seven sixteenths, I believe. The half inch is the size of the the bolts that hold down the compressor. So you get a, an extension on there and you get your drill in there and you can take them out really easy. A lot of times I'll get my little small adjustable wrench I carry in my pocket and I'll open it up and it'll do a half inch and I'll just end up doing it that way, but it's good to have the option of making it a little faster. I keep these guys in here because my tools always go with me and I have a recovery bucket as well with uh, the Appian core tools, my uh, all my hose gaskets and things like that. I have that in a bucket with different hoses, but I always carry these with me. I have the the bigger imp and the smaller imp. I use this to cut the discharge line, and I usually use these to cut the the suction line. In the worst case scenario, I have used a sawzall, my little Milwaukee fuel reciprocating saw on the suction line if it's been replaced and there's a lot of a lot of brazing that let's say drip down and you can't get a good round you know it's out of round because of that flag terminals in case you have to replace the flag terminal on the, the compressor and it comes it's got the plastic covers on it they're clear that I, I bought those off Amazon and got some spare batteries for like the, my old, my old, uh, my other inverter phase checker has four batteries and I always keep them out of there because it's got an on off button. You turn it on and it stays on and guess what? They're dead. Got some jumpers. It's a nice pretty beefy little flap on here. And then last but not least. Oh, let's see here. It's not what you think, because I already told you what it was. But don't even think about it, Sonny. There's nothing in here. No goodies in here. Nope, no goodies. You want goodies? You want goodies? Yeah. This is my Ampion Ion PT gauges. Bought these from True Tech Tools. These are the the Accu Tools vacuum rated quarter inch uh, thumb to, thumb you know Schrader depressor. I have run into the spots where I worked on unit heat pumps that have such a tight spot on your access fittings. I mean, really tight. There's no way you're going to get a core removal tool in there. No way. So I have put these on uh, when I've had to work on a heat pump. I had to replace the braze plate heat exchanger. These go great, but you know, depress the Schrader, recover your charge, and then evacuate, and then you know, get back in business. These do work pretty good for that. I also use it for when I want to put the gauges on equipment and not, you know, it gives you a different angle for one thing, and then plus you control the amount of uh, refrigerant that's coming out. It's not like you have to worry about screwing it on really fast. Sometimes when I need to just screw it on there, I have the easy turn from uh, Uniweld. And it really diminishes the, the amount of gas that comes on and off, and it, and it does really screw on easy. Hence the name, easy turn. I have these in quarter inch, but I also have these, this is a 5 16 so when I don't want to use a core tool, obviously on a Daikin system, I just want a, a simple, what's my pressure, and I want to, you know, compare it to my transducer voltage reading, I use this. This is the compact one. Now these aren't vacuum rated, and I've, I've looked into getting the, uh, C&D makes the vacuum rated ones. They're more like this. They've got the, the nut on here, and I'm thinking about getting a set of those because one of these likes to leak through the stem if you don't watch it. The charging fitting, that way I can put the tool on here and I can charge through here if I want. And that's just an adapter that I really don't need. My uh, 
temperature clamps, some spare batteries, the quarter inch compact uh, thumb depressing Schrader depressor. That's the spare battery. I don't think I have any other goodies in there. Got another 516th one in there. That may be the leaker because I had one leak on me. And the reason I like these, it's got an app, but you don't need it. You don't need the app. You know, you, you turn it on, you've got a plug back here for your temperature clamp. Sunny quit. And those dashes that you see right there, those will become active with temperature. Let's plug one in. Once you plug it in, it's active. Got the battery indicator. And it has the Bluetooth connectivity. There is an app, and it works, and then you can use it. And of course, the range is normal Bluetooth range, crap. But these are really great. I love the fact I don't have to uh, have, you know, a screen. Now you have to use you have to have a PT chart because you get your temperature. Let's say you're you're subcooling in uh, superheat, you will need a uh, PT chart to translate that. But you know, you know how to do that. It's no big deal. And you don't have to worry about the phone. Now, if you are addicted to the app or you really prefer the app, they, their app does do the subcooling for you. Quick press and turn it off. Hold into it, and it actually zeroes it out. You hold it. Hold it until the dashes appear. But this little Testo kit, funny enough, is perfect for that. And I'm not against the Testo things, but like I said, you have to have the phone, the device, in order to actually use it. And I am uh, not anti-device. I love my devices, but I also like the simplicity of the screen. That's why on my rooftop bag, I carry the Robin Air gauges for quick and quick and easy carry those i'm not going to get into the rooftop bag there's just basic stuff in there my meter my wrenches and things like that just to work on rooftop equipment you know i don't want to focus on this guy so the tech pack mc i love it i had the milwaukee bag and i tried it out and i liked the bag okay it had a hard bottom like this uh the problem was the Containers on the side flapped over this way and this way, and if it was too heavy, the tools were in there too heavy, it knocked the bag over. The little shoulder strap that was on it always, it, it was always on the ground, so if the ground was wet, guess what? It soaked up the water, and you know. And you can have that same issue with the straps. You know, you could argue that, but once, I, I took this out this week for the, for the first run, and I'm telling you, it's just like coming home again. I uh, opened it up, doing my doing a compressor diagnosis and opened up both sides and it's like you open it up bam bam everything's there it's well balanced everything's accessible i'm sorry you know and pedo is expensive because like i said my first backpack cost me 215 dollars now they're like 289 they've, they've raised their prices to cover that five-year warranty but you get what you pay for I can't say that I regret buying the Beto. I regret buying the other bags. And then I always come back to the Beto. Always come back to the Beto. And uh, I heard they've got, I hear they have an MB3 out now. So guess what? I'll be shelling out that money for that MB3 when it hits the market because I have an MB2 and I always thought to myself, this would be a great bag if it had the hard bottom. The MB3 has the hard bottom and it's a little bit wider. And it's like, if I want a quick diagnostic bag, which I'm using my MB2 right now is that I've got the field piece, uh, the, the smaller bag they have, the 36. I have that, I tried it out and it's no worse than the MB2 in the fact that you can't put the bottom on water. The MB2 is the same way, you have to hang it. If you get the bottom of the field piece wet, it doesn't soak, but it just stays wet. It's kind of like a, 
water resistant rain jacket. It doesn't really soak in, but it just kind of has that wet feel to it for a while until you shake it off. So, you know, I've tried a lot of them. I've got the Klein backpack sitting in my uh, garage. Tried it out, didn't like it. Not dissing it, it just wasn't for me. But if you want the smaller backpack, instead of this big guy, If you want a smaller form factor, you like the backpack, but you want a little little thinner, not quite as tall or whatever, this guy's great. He's my, like I said, he's a new addition to the family. My Daikin VRV repair bag. My rooftop bag, which I culled out a little bit. He's all, got all kinds of goodies in him. I'm not going to go through all of them, but very, very handy guy to have. And... Uh, You'll never go wrong with a veto. Okay, I got you. And I got pass-through sockets in here, the smaller ones. Because you know you get in get into spots where they got bolts sticking through and everything. And these pass pass-throughs are really nice. So I do have that in here. Tech Pack MC. Can't go wrong with it. I got it for $220 on True Tech Tools. Uh, use the Shop Talk discount code. And it's a really nice pack. It's really nice. It's really well made. I just need to get a better. I need. I guess I need to get one of those veto pouches that actually are a little smaller, maybe. And that's. But this one works, so that's why I use it pack him on the side because you got to have this this is nice to have you like I said when you're checking temperatures and pressures and everything it's got everything in here you know you got the temperature clamps and they'll go up to a pretty pretty good size you can actually take it off and unsnap it out of there and you can actually put a zip tie on it kind of like the Sporlin's new temperature clamps are and uh, really nice so there you go there's my rundown of my new baby yeah, I know, you're my new baby too. But, uh, Tech MC, Tech Pack MC, go get you one. You know you want it. Thanks for watching.